Hello, I'm Monkey SFT. Today is Monday, July 26, 2021, and here's the news you need to know. Sa kabila ng masamang panahon at banta ng COVID-19, tuloy ang kilos protesta ng iba't ibang grupo kasabay ng huling State of the Nation Address o SONA ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte. Ayon sa ilang release, talam naman nila ang banta ng COVID-19 pero mapangani rin daw ang gutom na mararanasan nila kung mananatili lamang sa bahay at hindi magpuprotest sa laban sa diomonay pagkukulang ng Administrasyong Duterte. Nagdeploy naman ang Philippine National Police ng 15,000 na police para mapanatili ang seguridad sa lugar malapit sa batasang pambansa. Ipinagpaliban muna ang bakunahan ngayong araw at bukas sa Marikina City dahil sa masamang panahon. Inabisuhang bumalik sa Sabado ang mga nakaschedule ng bakuna ngayong Lunes at Martes. Samantala sa Sampaloc, Manila, inalmahan ng ilang nakapila sa bakuna ang mga diomonoy sumingit at agad nabigyan ng numero sa pila kahit kararating lamang. Pero giit ng site manager, walang VIP treatment sa lugar. Nagpakawala naman ang tubig sa ilang dam sa bansa dahil sa pag-ulan. Tigi isang gate ang binuksan sa Binga, Ambuklao at Ipo Dam. Pinag-iingat ang mga residente nakatira malapit sa mga dam. I'm Joseph Morong. Stand with us. Stand for truth. Sa huling taon ng panunungkulan ni Pangulong Duterte, balikan, pakinggan at himayin natin ang laman ng kanyang ikaanim at huling State of the Nation address sa report ni Richard Haydarian. Unang-una, nakita natin dito si Pangulong Duterte. Back pa rin siya dun sa kanyang uh, usual no, trope of argumentation at saka yung kanyang core policy which is yung, uh, yung kanyang kampanya laban sa pinagbabawal na droga. If titignan natin yung first third ng kanyang speech, ang very much yung emphasis niya ay law and order. No? At saka yung tulong at saka yung role ng Philippine National Police and Armed Forces of the Philippines in terms of upholding uh, rule of law. I will never deny and the ICC can record it. Those who destroy my country, I will kill you. Uh, hindi siya nag-provide ng evidence or any kind of data, verified data to show na nagsagsid talaga yung kanyang kampanya. But the president was very defiant na tama yung ginawa niya. In fact, sabi niya, he never second-guessed yung what-ifs kung hindi niya nagawa ito or hindi niya nagawa yan. Very strong din siya dun sa kanyang populist anti-oligarchy no? or anti-cartel, nung term niya cartel uh, kind of policies na claim niya na under his administration, he went against oligarchs and big businesses uh, na nag-cheat sa government, na hindi nagbabayad ng buwis, hindi nag-provide ng effective services. So he was brave enough to go after them. So ang message talaga ni Pangulo Duterte dito is he was a strong and decisive leader. He may have done some up- unpopular things, pero ginawa niya uh, para sa taong bayan. I am a Filipino and I love my country. I do not want my country in this array because of drugs. Na-mention niya yung freedom of information uh, law but walang masyadong uh, follow-through by the president no, on how exactly it's being implemented, how exactly it's creating more transparency in government. But nonetheless, yung, yung position ni Paolo Duterte is that under his watch, naging more effective yung uh, delivery of public services. To further promote transparency and accountability in government, we also issued the order of the freedom of information and opens the record of transaction, decision, issuances of all government agencies in relation to this processing of driver's license, processing of passports, parang naging mas madali lahat para sa taong bayan, para sa mga OFWs. At the same time, of course, na-emphasize din niya yung infrastructure development, yung flagship infrastructure projects ay nag, uh, nag-speed up no, under his watch. So there was a lot of, uh, I would say, rhetorical uh, uh, positioning by the president, yung kanyang populist positioning, uh, but very much thin in terms of actual data, no, uh, uh, yung kanyang mga claims. Gone are the days when the Philippines decides and acts in the shadows of the great powers. Well, the president emphasized na independent yung kanyang foreign policy. Sinabi niya na ang Pilipinas ay hindi magiging subservient uh, sa mga iba't ibang bansa, mga superpowers, very much defending China. And then of course, back to uh, usual arguments si Paolo Duterte na, na Yes, I mean, assert ko na yung arbitration award, but at the same time, wag natin masyadi assert yung claim natin against China because, you know, we don't want a suicidal war, no? How can we fight China? Do we have the weapons? 
Do we have the everything? Hindi naman surprising. We have seen this also in previous State of the Nation address. But very clear si Pablo Duterte in terms of his uh, argument na hindi siya tuta ng mga superpowers. Uh, you know, he's friendly with China, but he's still his own sovereign leader. Pagdating sa pandemia, of course, yung argument ni Pablo Duterte was that everything was going well until nakaran na pandemic. But uh, wag natin kalimutan yung yung debt natin ay lumalaki over time no on present Duterte even before the pandemic no yung ating growth rate actually was the slowest in eight years in 2019 before yung pandemic but clearly he did not want to also go into the details ang, ang kanyang position is uh, parang effective naman ang government in terms of management of the pandemic nag provide naman ang government ng uh, social assistance and amelioration measures I think what he was trying to say is that we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel But still, be very be very careful, baka kasi this is a train that is coming. And of course, in that sense, he was uh, he was talking about Delta variant. So I think that was a very good job by the president to strike a balance. I bore no illusions that steering a nation towards a comfortable life for every Filipino would be easy. Mixing record in Palm Duterte, some would say even more negative than positive, depending on what issue you're looking at. But I think the president has raised some very important issues, has asked very good questions. Now, hopefully, uh, masasagutan ng kanyang successors in a more uh, measured, calibrated way that is in accordance to the rule of law, our constitution, and national interests. Ngayong araw, idinaos ang ikaanim at huling State of the Nation Address o SONA ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte. Ibinida niya ang ilang nagawa ng kanyang administrasyon at gagawin pa sa natitirang halos isang taon ng kanyang pamumuno. For the record, mga kastan for truth, ano-ano ang naging laman ng huling SONA ng Pangulo? Transactions will be further trimmed with the rollout of the Philippine Identification System or the filthy to the Philippine Identification System Act with this. We hope to facilitate the better access, uh, better services and access for all Filipinos. To unburden of people from the hefty cost of tertiary education, my administration worked with Congress to pass a landmark legislation that had remained and passed for so many years. The Universal Access or Tertiary Education Act in 2017, which provides free education to college students and state universities, was to increase our infrastructure spending to an average of 5% of the country's GDP. This is significantly higher than infrastructure spending of each and past four administrations. MRT-3, with its frequent breakdowns and unloading of passengers mid-rail, was a horror that was, a daily, that was for the daily commuters to endure in the past. Now, MRT-3 no longer unloads passengers but to their destinations. The waiting time between trains had been significantly reduced to 10 trains running at only 30 kilometers per hour before now MRT runs 23 tra trains at 60 kilometers per hour. We have taken away the misery of public commuting. Kung kayo ang tatanungin mga Kastan for Truth, kontento ba kayo sa naging huling sona ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte? And that's all for today, Mga KSFT. Don't forget to like and follow Stand for Truth, GMA Facebook page for the latest updates. I'm Joseph Morong. Stand with us. Stand for Truth.